Hi, well, here's a nice example you might like to try if you haven't tried it already on basic complex number methods. What we've got here is we're given that z1 equals 1 minus i and we're asked to find the arg of z1. Then the next part we're given also that z2 equals 3 plus 4i and asked to find in the form a plus ib where a and b are real numbers z1 times z2 and z2 divided by z1. Okay, so you might like to uh, pause the video if you haven't given this a go already. Come back and check out your answers with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So let's just see how we'd approach this problem. Well, first of all, I want to draw this complex number Z1 on an argon diagram. You don't have to do this, but uh, I'm doing it just so that we can see what's going on, okay? Um, I'm sure you could most probably do it in your head, but uh, we've got the real axis here and we've got the imaginary axis. And if we're looking at the complex number Z1, it's going to be 1 in the real direction and minus 1 in the imaginary direction. So you've got a complex number looking something like this. So this is going to be Z1, okay, Z1 there. And so when it comes to working out what the arg of Z is, remember you have to turn from the positive real axis for an angle between minus pi radians and pi radians. So in other words, I've got to turn in a clockwise direction, okay? This is going to be the arg of Z1, that angle in there. If I was to go this way around, it would be too much. It would exceed pi radians, the equivalent of 180 degrees. Okay, so we've got to work that angle out. In fact, it's pretty obvious, really, because we've got one unit across, one unit down. We've got an isosceles triangle here, so this has to be 45 degrees. Okay, so, um, but again, if you weren't sure about this and you were doing it just generally for other questions, let's just put in that angle theta. Then, to get theta, theta would be equal to the inverse tan of 1 over 1. Okay, so if we did that, 1 over 1, which is the inverse tan of 1, in degrees mode, it would be 45 degrees, but we generally work in radians. So in radians, 45 degrees is the exact value pi over 4. Pi over 4 radians then, just say rads for short. So, when it comes to working out what the arg of Z1 is, we can say therefore arg of Z1, we have to turn in the negative sense, so it is minus 45 degrees, or generally, as I say, we prefer it in radians, so it would be equal to minus pi upon 4 radians, okay? So, there we go. That's how I would get the arg of Z1. Now, we're given then also that Z2 is equal to 3 plus 4i and asked to find in the form A plus IB, where A and B are real numbers, Z1 times Z2 and Z2 divided by Z1. So, let us start with part B first of all. So, we're doing Z1 then multiplied by Z2 which is going to equal for Z1, 1 minus i, and we're multiplying that then with Z2, which is 3 plus 4i. So we'd expand this in the usual way. We'd have 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 4i is 4i, and then minus i times 3 is minus 3i, and now for this one we've got minus i times plus 4i is going to be a negative value and it's going to be 4 multiplied by i squared. We can tidy this up because i squared, i is the root of minus 1. If we square it, you're going to get minus 1. Minus 4 then times minus 1 is going to be plus 4. So this is plus 4 here. So we've got 3 
plus another 4, which is going to be 7. And then we've got 4i minus 3i, which is just going to be plus i. So you can see this is in the form a plus ib. Okay. If we're asked what a and b were, a would be 7. And the b value is a real number. It's the number 1. We've got 1i. Okay. So b is 1. Now for the next part, let's just come down here. Part C, we're asked to work out Z2 divided by Z1. So Z2 is 3 plus 4i. So we've got 3 plus 4i. And we're dividing that by Z1, which is 1 minus i. Now, in order to get this in the form A plus IB, what we've got to do is essentially multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of 1 minus i. The complex conjugate is just to switch the sign here. So we'll have 1 plus i. And we multiply the top by 1 plus i, so we're effectively multiplying by 1, so it doesn't alter the value of this, but just changes the appearance. So we think of these as being in their own brackets now. OK, so we've got that. And we're multiplying it by 1 plus i over 1 plus i. So if we carry out our multiplication now, we got 3 times the 1 is going to be 3. 3 times the i is plus 3i. And then we've got 4i times 1, which is plus 4i. And then we've got 4i times another i. So that's going to be 4i squared. And we know that i squared is minus 1, so that's going to be minus 4. And all that is divided now by 1 minus i times 1 plus i. Now you could multiply it out fully, or what happens is you've got the difference of two squares here. It's just going to reduce down to 1 times 1, 1 squared, which is 1. And then you're going to get 1i minus i, they cancel, and then you've got minus i times plus i, which is going to be minus i squared. But i squared is minus 1, so you've got minus minus 1, which is plus 1. Tidy this up, and you've got 3 minus 4, which is minus 1, 3i plus 4i, which is 7i, and we're dividing all of this by 2. Don't leave it as this, because we've got to give it as a plus ib, two terms here. So we need to divide each of the terms by 2. So minus 1 over 2, minus a half then, and then you've got plus 7 over 2 times i. I'm going to put the i first though, just so that it looks exactly in the form that we were asked. I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you did put 7 over 2i though. Okay. There you go. So I hope that's given you some idea then on that example.